Hey guys, it's Yaron with another coding interview tutorial and this time we have product of array except self. This one is labeled as a medium difficulty, probably because of this follow-up part, which I'm also going to cover in this video. So let's get straight into the problem description. So given an array nums of n integers where n is larger than one, we turn an array output such that output i is equal to the product of all elements of nums except for nums i. So it means that for each element x, we want to return the product of all the elements except for x. Okay, so let's look at an example. If we get this input array, the output should look like this. The first element is 24 because that is the product of all the elements except for the first one. 3 times 2 times 4, that's 24, right? The second element is 40 because that is the product of all elements except for the second one. So 5 times 2 times 4, that's 40. 60 is the product of these elements, right? 30 is the product of these elements. Okay, so how are we going to solve this? We will start with the most straightforward solution we can think of. For each index i, we will loop over all of the elements and compute their product. We will only skip the element at index i. So for index 0, we will only skip the number at index 0. For index 1, we will skip the number at index 1. For index 2, we will skip the number at index 2. And for 3, we will skip the number at index 3. This way we get to the output array that we want. Okay, so let's write the code for this. Okay, so as usual, I want to take the uh, length of the array which is at nums.size, and we create the vector for the output. Uh, it's going to be a vector of integers, size n, same size as the input. And for the main loop, we will loop over all of the elements. So i goes from 0 to uh, n. For each element, we want to loop over all the elements again, computing their product. But of course we want to skip the element at the index i, so what we can do is instead of doing this one loop, we can split it into two. One loop would go from 0 to i minus 1, and the second will go from i plus 1 all the way through the end. So this is where we're skipping index i. So let's also uh, obviously return uh, the output. And let's try this. Okay, so it works. Uh, now. Of course, life is never that easy, and this is just our starting point because the complexity of this algorithm is going to be squared uh, because of these nested uh, for loops, right? So it would be great if we can just get rid of these two inner for loops, and this way we will have linear time complexity instead of squared. So the key here is to notice that what we're trying to find for each element is the product of its prefix, meaning all the elements on its left, multiplied by the product of its suffix, all the element on its right. So basically I can say that this loop is computing the product of the prefix. So I can say this is the prefix. And that this loop is computing the product of the suffix. And then this should be prefix multiplied by suffix. So if you want to get rid of these inner loops, how about we pre-compute all possible prefix products and all possible suffix products ahead of time, uh, something like that. And then instead of doing these two inner loops, we'll be able to just pull these values from memory, like this. So now this loop will run in linear time, right? But this only matters if the pre-processing time is also going to be linear, right? If pre-computing the prefix and suffix arrays is going to take a square time, then we're back to the naive solutions time complexity, which means no improvement. So how are we going to pre-compute prefix and suffix arrays in linear time? All numbers we're trying to find are these. The prefix at index i is the product of all the elements on the left of i. The suffix at index i is the product of all elements on the right of i. And then, of course, the output of index i is going to be its prefix multiplied by its suffix. Now, uh, let's break it down on this small example. So prefix at index 0 is going to always be 1 because there are no elements on the left of index 0, right? So we're always going to initialize it to 1. Prefix at index 1 is going to be input 0 because that is the only element on the left of index 1. Prefix at index 2 is going to be input 0 multiplied by input 1 because these are the numbers on the left of index 2. Prefix at index 3 is going to be input 0 multiplied by input 1 multiplied by input 2 because again these are the numbers on the left of index uh, 3. Now 
Uh, this part looks a bit familiar, right? We just computed it here. So instead of calculating it again, we can just take it from here, right? So uh, let's just replace it. And by the same logic, prefix 2 is just prefix 1 multiplied by input 1. So let's replace that. And prefix 1 is going to be prefix 0 multiplied by input 0. And now that we have this toy example laid out, it's pretty easy to come up with a recursion equation here. We can see that it works for all possible indices. So we have our equation and we can use it for dynamic programming. So let's see how we do it in code. This equation translates exactly as it is to code. So uh, it would look very similar. The first element is always going to be 1. And then we loop over all of the other elements. So I would go from 1 to n and write the equation here. The suffix array is going to work very similarly. We just have to go backwards. So the last element of the suffix array is always going to be 1 because there are no elements on the right of the last element. And then we will go from the uh, second to last element all the way to the uh, first one and again write the formula and we will just have to replace i minus 1 with i plus 1 because we are going backwards so let's see if it works okay so this solution has linear time complexity and that's optimal we're not going to get any better than that because we're always going to have to look at each element at least once but the common follow-up to this question is how can you do this in constant time? So of course the output, uh, the space needed for the output is not going to be considered for the space complexity because uh, you can't do it without creating the output array, right? So how can we do it without creating any additional arrays? So uh, in our case, we have these two additional arrays that we would like to eliminate, right? Now, because we are given this space for the output array for free, why not use this space to replace one of our additional vectors? So we're basically going to use the uh, output array to hold all of our suffix uh, products. So we're going to just replace this with output. And we can get rid of the suffix array. Okay, so we got rid of one of the extra arrays. Now let's uh, clean this up for a minute. Now we have these two loops operating on two different arrays, so why not just merge them together? And now we need to notice that with each iteration, we are only using the previous prefix, meaning we don't really need all the old prefix products. So we don't need to save them. We can just uh, save the previous prefix in a single variable like this. And now if we ignore the space needed for the output array, we are only using a constant amount of extra space, which is exactly what we wanted. So we're basically done. Let's try to submit this. Okay, so it looks like we are done with this question, including the follow-up. So uh, this is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And thanks for watching. I will see you next time.